Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the robotics lecture uh, for the course MCTE 4352 from the Department of Mechatronics Engineering, International Islamic University, Malaysia. Uh, this is still the introductory stage of our course. So in this uh, video, we are going to discuss about various advantages, disadvantages of robotic system. And also we'll be discussing um, uh, very basic components of robotic system. What are the major components involved in any robots? Uh, um, what are the what is work coordinate system? What is tool coordinate system? Um, what are the different types of uh, work envelope, uh, standard work envelope for any robotic system, so on and so forth. So let us start with the advantages of robots. Uh, there are various advantages of robotic system to be integrated in the industry. A uh, few of the advantages have been listed here. For example, it will increase the productivity, uh, safe operation, efficiency, quality and consistency of the products. Uh, it, will, uh, it can work in hazardous environment without any uh, extra support. Um, for example, life support, comfort or concern about uh, extra safety. Uh, which is not possible for the case of human operators. Uh, if human operators has to work in any hazardous environment, we have to take extra precautions uh, and ex uh, there, there will be a need for extra logistic support. So this is uh, one very good advantage of any robotic system. Um, also, robot to work in any environment, it does not require any extra environmental comfort. Uh, for example, air conditioning, lightning and, uh, lighting and all these things. And it can work uh, continuously, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without any um, stop. Uh, so this is another big advantage of robotic system. And the repeatability of any robot is much, much better than any human operator because human operator um, repeatability may be compromised by their, their fatigue and also by their eyesight, aging, and also even by the emotional uh, stability. Uh, whereas robot, our robot is uh, free from all these things. So uh, any industrial robot can uh, do a job repeatedly uh, with enough precision as compared to a uh, human operator. And accuracy is also positional accuracy, uh, manufacturing accuracy is much better for the case of robot as compared to any human operator. Also, uh, some level of parallel tasking or simultaneous working is possible for the case of robotic system, but for the human, it is not uh, possible. And uh, as a whole, we can say that robot has some capability that is beyond the um, limit of any human being. Okay. But uh, to integrate the robot in the industry will cause a various societal problem as well because uh, eventually robots will replace the human workers for any type of repetitive works. So that, will, that may cause um, basically job loss and all sort of societal problem unless those, uh, those workforce are uh, trained, retrained and uh, can be upgraded their can can the, and their skills can be upgraded then uh, they can be rehired as well uh, so also uh, for example in case of emergency situation uh, robot system overall system robotic system uh, response is much slower as compared to human uh, response the the for example the reflex response is, is still much faster for the case of human in, uh, as compared to robotic industrial, uh, conventional industrial robotic system. And also uh, robot, usually industrial robot uh, does not uh, come with uh, any sort of decision making process or decision making capability. So it's still human uh, needs to intervene in, in, in the case of a unique situation. So the decision making power is still uh, should uh, there is a lack of decision making power for any conventional robotic system however with the advantage uh, with the advances of artificial intelligence technology maybe in future uh, industrial robot can also um, maybe able to take decisions for uh, different unique situations 
uh, usually uh, initial costing of the robot in establishment and robot installation is quite high so not all the industry can afford it uh, mostly for the small medium enterprise SME industries will find difficulties to install a uh, robotic system uh, because of the cost involvement and uh, sometimes the robot has uh, limited degrees of freedom uh, as compared to human uh, also they may uh, conventional industrial robot uh, lacks of sensory system for example uh, vision uh, system and uh, all these type of things and whereas human um, has uh, all sort of sensor that is needed uh, to operate in any environment uh, so that's 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 a disadvantage associated with any types of robotic system conventional robotic system okay next uh, what is the degrees of freedom this is a very important concept of uh, study of robotic system uh, what degrees of freedom is basically uh, for any uh, mechanism uh, the number of independent joints um, are known to be the degrees of freedom so this number of independent joints when you have this number of independent joint uh, so you need uh, different actuators to uh, actuate those joints so so basically degrees of freedom is equal to the number of actuators required to drive a particular mechanism or particular robotic system so this is the uh, concept of degrees of freedom I think you have also studied it in your theory of machine course as well uh, so degrees of freedom I hope it is clear that number of independent joints um, is basically the uh, degrees of freedom and uh, this is showing the degrees of freedom involved in uh, human hand uh, so this is I suppose approximately uh, 22 degrees of freedom we have uh, a human um, <coughs> hand so that uh, when you have the advantage of high number of degrees of freedom uh, will help you to uh, hold any type or any shape of an object so basically uh, with the help of our palm uh, we can basically grab any uh, shape of an object uh, so that this is uh, an advantage of high number of degrees of freedom so it makes it more flexible but on the uh, same way it basically reduces the rigidity of the system so uh, so when you have uh, so you, you cannot really apply when you have huge number of degrees of freedom you cannot really apply huge force so this is one uh, disadvantage uh, this is basically uh, the trade-off when you have high number of degrees of freedom you will become uh, the system becomes more flexible but the uh, rigidity becomes uh, less and less okay now next uh, th these are the major components for any robotic system so first you need to have a manipulator okay uh, so is basically the uh, and then you have the end effector the tool that is attached to the end or end point of your manipulator so manipulator is basically the links and joints the basic links and joints and the base and at the end of the manipulator you will have the end effector this end effector can be a simple creeper it can be a welding tool it can be a paintbrush anything can be an end effector <clears throat> and to drive these joints and the end effector you will need actuators and you will need some basic sensors to operate the robot uh, and you may also need advanced sensors uh, to make the robot intelligent with uh, some uh, level of um, some level of computational ability and sensor integration your robot can become um, more intelligent and then obviously you will need a controller to drive all the actuator to analyze all the sensory signal and based on this based on this uh, you can take the decision through the controller this decision can be implemented to the actuators of course you need uh, this controller has processor software as well uh, so and uh, finally the power source so these are the major components or the main components of any robotic system next uh, the joints what are the different types of joints 
those are available in any most of the robots so they basically you will have a linear join or sometimes called prismatic joints you have rotary or revolute join um, and also you have sliding joints which will have which is basically a combination of linear and rotary join and you may have a spherical join so uh, if i share with you the picture then it will be easier for you so this is linear joint basically it is kind of a uh, two cylinder uh, going through one and another uh, so this is the prismatic or linear joint you have a rotary or revolute joint is basically a simple joint uh, you, you have a hinge point here and then you can rotate these two link with respect to one another and a sliding joint is basically you have hinge at the same time you have a slider as well and a spherical joint is similar to ball socket joint so in this case you have a sphere going into a um, um, uh, basically a hollow sphere a solid sphere is going through a hollow sphere so you have here <coughs> uh, three uh, rotary uh, effects uh, with respect to x y and z so this is uh, another spherical joint but in our um, course we will limit our discussion only <clears throat> between prismatic and uh, revolute joint because we will be mostly focusing on industrial robots so industrial robots will have um, mostly either linear or rotary joint so this is the uh, for our course our scope of our uh, course will uh, concentrate only on linear prismatic or rotary revolute joint okay now let's talk about the robot coordinate system uh, there are various robot coordinate system which has uh, basically it can be uh, divided into uh, five uh, basic configuration for the case of industrial robot so first one is Cartesian coordinate system which is basically consists of three prismatic joints that's why it says 3p uh, so in this case uh, you have x y and z translational axis all of them are perpendicular to each other so and it will uh, the and uh, the example is a basic cnc machine uh, which you may have operated in your uh, workshop course so this cnc machine is basically nothing but a cartesian robotic system also you may have a cylindrical robot which we will see in this case of cylindrical robot you will have uh, two revolute joint and one uh, sorry uh, one revolute joint and two prismatic joint that's why so r2p a spherical uh, robotic system will have two revolute joint and one prismatic joint and finally articulated hand or anthropomorphic uh, robotic system will have three revolute joint there is a special type of robot which we call uh, selective compliance assembly robot arm or called SCARA robot very famous robot in industry for pick and place operation it has a unique configuration which we will see later on in the next slide so this is basically is a, a Cartesian robot this is a cylindrical robot uh, this Cartesian robot you can see here is basically uh, Z axis is up and down Y axis is going in and out X is left and right so and this is your end effector this is your basically the manipulator and this is the end effector so the end effector can go up and down in and out and left and right so this is basically a Cartesian robot in the case of cylindrical robot okay uh, the Cartesian robot is basically the work envelope would look like uh, uh, I wouldn't say it's workspace it's work envelope is look like a cube okay whereas in cylindrical robot you have one revolute joint and one uh, two um, two basically the linear joint so this two linear joint is basically extension of the arm the radius of the extension of the arm and uh, the up and down motion of the end effector so uh, so you can have uh, if you draw it uh, it's basically a cylinder it will form a cylinder where you can vary the height of the cylinder as well as the radius of the cylinder by varying these two linear joints 
for the case of a spherical robot is basically forms and sphere uh, spherical cord, uh, spherical workspace or work envelope so you have one first revolute joint second revolute joint and another uh, this is the basically the radius arm as the uh, linear joint an articulated hand robot you have basically three degrees of freedom revolute joint this is also does form an spherical system uh, or spherical work envelope so this one is first revolute joint second revolute joint and the third revolute joint okay now uh, the classification of the robots there are various ways you can classify the robot we can classify the robot on the basis of how does it look like so uh, you, you, you may have uh, prosthesis, you can have exoskeletons. Exoskeleton is similar to what uh, you have in the Iron Man movie. Uh, prosthetics is basically when you uh, any amp amputee put any extra prosthesis for their uh, uh, because their hand or legs or limbs are amputed. On the basis of coordinate system, I have already explained, <coughs> you have cylindrical, <coughs> spherical, joint arm robot or Cartesian uh, coordinate robots. On the basis of control method, you can have a servo control method or that means your all the joint will have servo motor and you will have a feedback loop to control uh, these motors. Uh, Non-servo uh, control robot is also available. That means you are not getting any feedback signal. Rather, you, use, you may use simple stepper motors to control the robot. You may have point-to-point -point servo control robot. That means one point to another point, you just move the robot. Uh, doesn't matter which path you are going from one point to another point. Uh, whereas, uh, for example, um, let's say you have um, you have a point here, another point here. So P2P motion means you can go straight line, you can go this way you can go the end effector can move different way so this is basically point a to point b so this uh, is called point to point servo control mode but if you would like to have a continuous path servo control that means you have to define a path from point a to point b whether you have to go this way uh, let me put the laser pointer whether you have to go this way or this way or a straight line so then it will become a continuous path servo control robot so advanced robots are all with uh, equ equipped with servo control uh, motors usually ac servo motors next <clears throat> based on the drive technology you can have electrical or uh, hydraulic system mostly the, these are the hydraulic system the payload capacity is high whereas electrical uh, the it is more uh, easy to integrate and um, there is no way uh, it can cause a uh, uh, oil slippage or this sort of things whereas hydraulic robots usually will be uh, very bulky in nature okay mm. Uh, this one I think I have already discussed you have revolute and prismatic these are the two major uh, joints that we will be discussing for our whole robotics course and uh, this is also I have mentioned for the Cartesian you have a uh, uh, 3p joint uh, 3 prismatic whereas in cylindrical you have uh, one revolute and two prismatic so this is the uh, way uh, to this table describes the major axis how these revolute joints or prismatic joints are arranged okay uh, as i mentioned you can have point-to-point -point control uh, so point-to-point -point control is uh, applicable for pick and place operation spot welding loading unloading operation you go for point-to-point -point. however for the case of continuous path usually this application goes for spray painting arc welding gluing operation where you have to follow a path so these are the cases you have to use continuous path control we will discuss both inshallah in our uh, course continuous path and point to point okay when you buy any robot what are the things you should look for so what are the specification that is most that are mostly required uh, when we select any robotic system 
so how many number of axes or degrees of freedom you want so this is basically numbers what is the payload capacity uh, what is the maximum speed you'd like to have for any robot what is the uh, stroke length maximum stroke length or maximum reach that you would like to have for the robot um, and uh, what is the tool orientation I mean is it perpendicular or you have to have some degrees of freedom all these things uh, but this may not be that important uh, but it is also one of the uh, one of the criteria that you may have to you may want to look for repeatability is very important uh, unit is millimeter precision and accuracy is also very important uh, which is in terms of millimeter an operating environment whether you need a special environment like uh, you need air conditioning environment or uh, some temperature control <coughs> usually for industrial robot there is no such requirement uh, mostly it will be uh, any normal environment you can you can uh, I mean any shop floor environment your robot should be able to work that is the reason of ro using the robot as mentioned earlier in these presentations okay um, so as I have mentioned the payload reach precision and repeatability so this is uh, so uh, basically precision uh, is the how accurately a specified a specified point can be reached and repeatability is how accurately the same position can be reached if the motion is repeated many times so this is mostly uh, this precision or accuracy is that let's say you want to move from um, a particular reference point uh, let me get, explain to it to you uh, with um, throwing an arrow okay so if you throw in archery if you throw arrow you have many circles right so you always try to target the innermost circle so that is the accuracy if your arrow goes to the it hits the innermost circle that means you are accurate but if you repeat these three uh, this process three times then uh, if we see that um, your arrow first one goes to the innermost circle but the second and third one goes uh, quite away from the innermost circle then we will say uh, only one time you were accurate uh, but your repeatability is not good so repeatability is very very important uh, but another person who, who may have uh, thrown the arrow uh, in a way that all three arrows hit the outer circle okay so we can say that uh, the accuracy is not good but either he or she is very precise in throwing the arrows so this is the difference between accuracy and precision in the case of machineries uh, be it robotic system or CNC system repeatability is more important than the accuracy the reason is uh, if you have a repeatable system by doing simple calibration you can make it accurate as well so but if your repeatability is not um, good enough then the machine is also cannot be corrected by even calibration okay uh, so okay robot reference frame so the robot reference frame there are various ways we can define the robot reference frame first is the base reference frame or the world reference frame or the global reference frame which is with respect to its base usually or it can be somewhere else uh, joint reference frame to so each joint can be defined as a reference frame uh, XYZ so uh, this is also possible tool reference frame if you're you decide uh, to put a frame of reference at the tool Act, all these things will be needed for your analysis uh, during the transformation using the transformation matrix so the, so remember there are three ways you can define the frame of reference either at the base or any other reference which is global reference frame you can have all the ref, uh, different frame of reference at different joints and you can have a frame of reference at the tool so three ways we can define the frame of reference for robotic system and examples of robot these are the examples of uh, serial robot uh, sorry these are the examples of industrial robot so basically it is most like a serial link robot almost almost all the industrial robot looks like a serial link robot so that means all the links are joined in serially okay no parallel mechanism here so all are serial mechanism 
so it can have three degrees of freedom uh, to seven degrees of freedom. So this is the variation. Uh, you won't see a robot more than seven degrees of freedom in the case of industrial robots. So you may have other types of robots, like for example, underwater robots, humanoid robots. Uh, you can have uh, locomotive robots uh, like wheel robot, link robot. That you can see this is a parallel link robot, okay? And you have legged robot. This is also legged robot. This is drones, okay? This is wheel robot. You can have uh, another examples of wheel robot, okay? Uh, this is also uh, autonomous robot, which are uh, it can move by itself. They have all the sensor integration, something like drone, uh, and also some uh, vehicles uh, which can move uh, uh, autonomously. And uh, there you have field robots, which work in very harsh environment. Okay. You have service robots, uh, and then you have uh, this is basically service robot this is for vacuum cleaning and mopping robot and yeah so these are the examples of the different types of robots but in our uh, course we will uh, constrain the scope only for the industrial mostly for the industrial robot we may touch a little bit of uh, mobile robot later on uh, towards the end of the course but mostly it will be concentrating on industrial robot applications of robot there are lots of lots of applications for industrial robot for example loading unloading pick and place operation welding painting uh, quality inspection uh, sampling assembly operation manufacturing and also surveillance medical application for medical robots as a for, uh, application of um, field robots in hazardous environment, underwater uh, and remote locations, you can use robots. You can even use for uh, social issues. For uh, there are new things called social robots, so which can be used, like for example, uh, Sophia. Uh, so this is an example of social robots, and uh, and you can use uh, rehabilitation robots as well uh, to help the disabled people. Uh, so in summary, what we can say is that robotics uh, is an interdisciplinary research. You, it involves machine design, mechanical design, uh, computer science and engineering, electrical engineering, as well as cognitive psychology, perception, and neuroscience even when we talk about uh, artificial intelligence in robotics. Uh, you have uh, various ways to conduct research in the field of robotics in terms of manipulation, loc locomotion, control, navigation, human robot interaction or even with the use of ai how you can help the robotics system so this uh, we can summarize uh, before we conclude uh, just what we'd like to share uh, a famous uh, robots laws uh, when we design any program any robot uh, isaac asimov a famous um, science fiction writer in in one of his book uh, mentioned these three laws Though it's not mandatory for you to follow this law, but this is a guideline for programming in robot so that it can work, operate safely. So the first law states that the robot may not harm any human being through their actions. So this is the first law. Second law says a robot must obey unless uh, it contradicts with the first law. That means uh, you cannot use a robot to harm any human being. The third law says, uh, but uh, the second law also says that the robot has to obey or uh, follow any instruction given by human. And the third law says that robot should uh, self-defend or should protect itself for any sort of harm, except it contradicts with the first and second law. What it means that uh, the robot will uh, try to defend itself as long as uh, it does not harm the human as long as it does not contradict that it disobey the human instructions. So that's all. With that, we conclude our lecture today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.